So friends, right now we are discussing equalization levy procedural aspect, when to pay, how to pay, how to file returns. Because equalization levy is not covered by Income Tax Act, it is covered by Finance Act 2016. As I told you, it is the legislation itself. So all the provisions that we have discussed for income tax law, similar provisions we, we can you can find for equalization levy. So filing of returns, uh, furnishing the statement, then rectification, appeal, everything, everything is there in this particular chapter. Let's go through it very quickly. The first section is 166 collection and recovery of equalization levy. This was the old section that is 6%. Okay, this is for 6%. Every person being a resident carrying on the equalization carrying on the business or profession or a non-resident having permanent establishment in India shall a deduct equalization levy referred in section 165 from the amount paid or payable to a non-resident in respect of the specified services which is advertisement if the aggregate amount of the consideration for the specified service exceeds rupees 1 lakh. So this is just a revision at what rate sir at the rate of 6%. The equalization levy so deducted, very, 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 very important, so deducted has to be deposited or credited with the central government within the 7th of the following month. So for the April month, for the April month, you have to deposit by 7th of May. For the May month, you have to deposit by 7th of June, kind of. For the December month, you have to deposit by 7th of Jan. So this will go on and on. An assessee who fails to deduct equalization levy notwithstanding such failure be liable to pay levy uh, pay uh, the levy to the credit of central government by the 7th of the month immediately following the said calendar month so immediately in the next month you have to deposit the equalization levy yeah so uh, if you did if if you do not deduct it and pay you will become personally liable okay this is a personal liability put by the government next so 166a this is for new that is to for 2 percent equalization levy the equalization levy referred in section 165A that is for e-commerce operator has to be paid by every e-commerce operator to the credit of central government. Now look at the obligation. Here it obligation is not on the payer. Here obligation is on the e-commerce operator itself. This is obligation on Amazon itself. Okay. For the quarter, this will be quarterly because handling the data monthly will be very difficult my dear friend. It's not easy to gather data from like India is not the only country where Amazon US is transferring the services. It has to gather data and therefore they have not put monthly obligation for e-commerce operator. It is a quarterly obligation. Yeah, you can compare this with section 166. For 6% 6 services for the payer, it's just like a TDS. The way we deposit the TDS immediately on the 7th of the following month is exactly same. But here for e-commerce operator, we are providing the concession by putting the obligation on him for the payment of the equalization levy at the rate of 2% uh, quarterly, not monthly, okay, of the financial year. Look at the date that you have to remember. These are, these are deducted for 30th June, 7th of the July. For 30th September, 7th October. For 31st December, 7th January. But March is important. For 31st March, it is 31st March, okay. Next sir, once payment is done, now payment is already done either monthly, 6% monthly and uh, uh, you know 2% quarterly, payment is done. But payment is done, that is one factor sir. Now we have to fi file the return, it's like the way we file income tax return, they have to file the fur furnish the statement and here we furnish the statement annually, okay. This particular statement will be furnished annually before 30th June, 30th June is the due date for furnishing the statement. So, the statement will be furnished in the form number 1. This is like a ITR form, form number 1, on or before 30th June immediately following the financial year. So, all the, uh, you know, people who are responsible to pay or deduct the equalization levy, they must give this furnish to the, this particular statement to the government on or before 30th June. And assessee or e-commerce operator who has not furnished the statement on or before 30th of June immediately following the previous year or having furnished the statement. He has furnished the statement but he notices some omis omissions or wrong particulars. That means there is an error. So whenever there is an error, we have to give the opportunity of a revised return. So here the furnish can be revised statement as the case may be. So that revision can happen. Such statement can be revised 
on or at any time before the expiry of the two years from the end of the financial year in which the specified service was provided or e-commerce supply was made or provided or facilitated. So you can understand they are providing us two years time from the end of the financial year in which the specified service was provided. So if you have provided services in the financial year 21-22 then you are getting two more years. So you get here actually before 31st March 2024 you can revise the statement. Where any SEC or e-commerce operator fails to furnish the statement within the prescribed time, AO may serve the notice. Do you remember the RAI notice section 142 notice for furnishing the return? Same notice can be served here. The, the AO has been empowered to issue such notice for furnishing such statement which then has to be furnished within 30 days from the date of servicing such notice. The after receiving the notice, you will get only 30 days to give the statement. So, it's like intimation. Once we file the return, we get 141 intimation. Similarly, once we furnish the statement, government of India will give you intimation. So, where statement has been furnished under section 167 by the assessee or e-commerce operator, then the this will automatically done by the CPC Bangalore. You know that the returns, returns and furnish, the statement will be furnished, computerized, and whenever there is an arithmetical error in the statement, that will be rectified. If there is any interest payable, if you have deposited your equalization levy delayed, then there has to be an interest component. That interest component will be computed in the uh, intimation, and uh, the total sum payable by uh, or the amount refunded, both thing is possible. There will either there will be no payment, no refund or there will be amount payable or there may be amount refunded, whatever it is, they will furnish the statement and they will give you the intimation. An intimation shall be prepared or generated and sent to the SSE or e-commerce operator specifying the sum determined or a refund due to him. The amount so refund due to him, uh, amount of refund due to the SSE or e-commerce operator in pursuance of some determination shall be granted to him. So there is no separate application required. If you deserve a refund you they, you will get the refund automatically the way we get in income tax however this is mcq however no intimation shall be sent after the expire of the one year from the end of the financial year in which such statement or revised statement was furnished so you get one year time after the end of the year in which statement was furnished so if the payment was made for previous year 21 22 please understand then statement will go in 20 to 23 and then then please understand you will get one more year from the end of this particular year that means you can revise uh, the intimation can be sent to you before 31st march 2024 so one year from the end of the year in which statement was furnished not the equalization levy was paid okay this is one thing where any where any in levy of interest penalty is payable please understand if any amount is payable you know that demand notice has to be served so this will there, there will be notice of demand in form number 2 if any amount is recoverable, obviously they will send you form number 2. So what was form number 1 statement? What is form number 2? Notice of demand. Further intimation issued upon the processing the statement or revised statement shall also be deemed to be notice of demand. Intimation is the deemed demand. For the purpose of processing the statement, CBDT may make scheme in centralized processing. So we already have centralized processing schemes. Next one, rectification of mistake. Sir, what if there is a mistake? Like we are having section 154 in income tax law where we can apply for the rectification. Here also you can apply for the rectification. With a view to rectify any mistake apparent from record, the AO may amend any intimation issued under section 168. Such inst intimation can be amended within one year from the end of the financial year in which intimation sought to be amended was issued. So here you get only one year time. Okay, The AO may make an amendment to, the, to any intimation either suomoto he can make application like he can make a correction suomoto or any mistake brought to him his notice by the assessee or e-commerce operator so on the application of the assessee or suomoto rectification can be done an amendment to any uh, any intimation which has to affect the increase in the liability so you are going to change the intimation and if that is going to increase the liability obviously you cannot pass that, that intimation order without giving an opportunity of being heard to the e-commerce operator or assessee. Where any such amendment to intimation has the effect of enhancing the sum payable or reducing the refund already made, the AO shall make an order specifying the sum payable by the assessee and e-commerce operator and the provision of this chapter shall apply accordingly. So obviously the due uh, proceedings will be followed whenever it is 
against the assessing. Next, interest. This is very, very important. Okay, very, very important section because uh, exam in examination this was targeted. So, what will happen if you do not deposit the equalization levy with income tax department within the time? Obviously, they will put the interest and penalty. Let's look at that. An assessee or e-commerce operator, assessee for 6%, e-commerce operator for 2%, who fails to credit equalization levy or any part thereof within a period specified under section 166 or 166A, to account of central government has to pay simple interest at the rate of 1% for such levy for every month or part of the month. So, half month or even one or two days of a month will be considered as a full month by which such crediting of uh, tax or any part thereof is delayed. Look at this. And there will be a penalty also. So, penalty for failure to deduct or pay equalization levy, 1000 rupees penalty per day. Look at this. Failure to deduct the whole or part of equalization levy under section 166, 6% 6 equalization levy. In addition to equalization levy and interest, the penalty equal to amount of equalization levy that he failed to deduct would be leviable, but that will be done by the department. Failure to pay whole or part of equalization levy under section 166A that is 2 percent equalization levy on e-commerce operator. Here also penalty equal to amount of equalization levy. It's like TDS only. In TDS also whenever you fail to deduct TDS, amount equal to TDS uh, can be levied as a penalty. Here also the same penalty. Now look at the interesting penalty. Failure to remit the equalization levy. This was for deduction. If you fail to deduct. Now here you have deducted. Deducted or and not deposited, deducted and not deposited or not de not paid for e-commerce operator. Okay. You have deducted that means you are well aware of the provision and you are using the government's money. Now you have to be punished. Failure to remit the equalization levy to the central government on or before 7th of the following month after the deduction of the same under section 165. This is for uh, this is for six percent equalization levy. Right now we are discussing. In addition to paying the equalization levy, in addition for please understand, in addition to paying equalization levy on a specified services that is advertisement six percent, an interest under section one hundred seventy, a penalty of one thousand for every day, penalty of one thousand every day during which such failure continues will be leviable. So that one thousand rupees is very very important because on this the question was asked and I have covered that question. However, such penalty shall not exceed, this is the maximum limit, shall not ex exceed amount of equalization levy. 1000 rupees per day is a very good amount of penalty. So, there has to be upper cap, they are leaving the, putting the upper cap of equalization levy amount. Look at this, Raghu Limited made a payment of 3 lakh rupees on 30th June 2020 towards procuring online advertisement space to the foreign company which has no business in India. That means they do not have P in India. Obviously, we are talking about 6 percent equalization levy. The company remitted equalization levy as on 23rd March 2021. So, 23rd March 2021 is the default like is the date when default was covered. So, from 30th June. So, for June the date the due date become 7th of July. 7th of July was due date because here it is a monthly payment. So, on 7th of July you are supposed to de deposit 6% of 3 lakh rupees that equals to 18,000. So, you are supposed to pay 18,000 to government. You did not pay. You have paid in the month of March. So, how many months default? July, August, September, October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March. 9 months delay. July to March, 9 months delay. So, 9 month interest you have to pay and not only interest, you also have to pay a penalty because you have deducted but not deposited. Okay. Calculate the interest and the penalty payable by Raghu, if any, so look at this. Interest for failure to remit the equalization levy. An assessee who fails to credit the equalization levy or part thereof within the seventh of the following month to the calendar month in which it was deducted to the account of the central government, he has to pay 1% interest at the rate of 1%. Look at this. In the present case, interest will be charged on 18,000 rupees. So, how 18,000? 18, 18,000 has been derived by multiplying 6% on 3 lakh rupees. The due date was 7th of July. However, since it was remitted only on 23rd March, the interest will be 1% on 18,000 for 9 months. If you compute it, you will get this particular number 1620. So, that is the amount of interest you have to pay. Sir, what about penalty? Penalty will also be there. 
failure to remit the equalization levy to the central government on or before 7th of the following month after deduction would attract the penalty of 1000 rupees every day but that cannot exceed the amount of equalization levy so look at this here the total delay was 268 you can count the number of days after 7th july to 23rd march you will get 268 days and after you can multiply that with 1000 it becomes 268000 in here i don't have to pay 268000 the maximum penalty that can be levied under this provision is 18000 next one penalty for failure to furnish the statement do you remember tds statement if you don't furnish you will be liable for 200 rupees fees per day here we don't have fees so they are putting 100 rupees fees or penalty for each day during which such failure continues next one section 173 circumstances when penalty cannot be levied so why when when penalties cannot be levied obviously when assess proves to ao and ao satisfy that there was a reasonable cause for such failure or you cannot anyhow if you have to levy the penalty even if you have to levy the penalty you have to provide a reasonable opportunity of being heard to the e-commerce operator or the assess then only you can initiate the penalty sir can we file an appeal to cit appeal yes because in equalization levy chapter also the appellate hierarchy is the same so what is the appellate hierarchy the first appeal will go to cit appeal this goes within 30 days then uh, again the order of cit appeal you can go to itat you can go to itat this goes within 60 days and after that high court and supreme court so but you need to know about cit appeal and itat that is more important an assessee of a e or e-commerce operator aggrieved by this word is very important aggrieved by imposing the penalty under this chapter may appeal to the cit appeal within a period of 30 days from the date of receipt of the order from the ao appeal will be in form 3 so please remember the form also form 1 was furnishing the statement form 2 was your uh, demand order form 3 is appeal order or appeal application accompanied with the fees of 1000 rupees so this we will furnish uh, it can be furnished electronically and all where the appeal has been filed the provision of section 249 to 251 of the income tax act would apply so they, they, we don't have any separate provisions here whole appeal proceedings of I in income tax act will apply exactly same here all the powers of income tax commissioner uh, commissioner of income tax appeal are same next appeal to itat sir itat also again the order of cit appeal you can go in itat sir how many days we have to go there within the 60 days so which form it here the form is form number four okay so in mcq it may come and the fees is same thousand rupees and all the provisions of income tax act will apply as if it is a uh, you know appeal under income tax law punishment for false statement punishment means imprisonment please understand sir if a person makes a false statement in a verification under this chapter or any rule made there under or delivers an account or statement which is false he shall be punishable with the imprisonment for the term which may extend to three years with a fine please understand so up to three years it can be uh, you know behind the bar an offense so punishable shall be deemed to be non-cognizable within the meaning of code of criminal procedure irrespective of anything contained in code of criminal procedure so it is overriding the uh, you know our country's code of criminal procedure and it is saying no no three years jail up to three years jail can be there and it is non-cognizable next section 177 inst institution of prosecution you cannot initiate the prosecution without taking the approval from ccit chief uh, commissioner of income tax obviously then only you can initiate the proceeding after this also there are certain minor uh, procedural aspect which I have uh, you know ignored uh, for discussion that discussion can be done in paper 6 uh, so far as paper this particular you know this discussion of international taxation basic knowledge this is enough we have discussed more than enough please do not waste your time in equalization levy more than this you have to study whatever I have taught don't go beyond this thank you